Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Josh Discoding. In today's video, we are going to take a look at making our AI enemy attack our player. So if you've been following along with the series up to this point, you'll have a behavior tree that looks something like this. You'll have an enemy that patrols an area randomly until it spots the player, at which point it will start to chase the player until it loses sight of the player. So this is some pretty basic guard AI logic we have set up here. And today we're going to make it so that while the enemy is chasing the player, it also attacks the player. So currently in our behavior tree, we have two types of composite nodes, a selector and a sequence. But there's actually a third composite node, which is a simple parallel. Now a simple parallel allows you to execute a main task, which would be this purple node here, and also executes, I'll say subtasks at the same time, which is this gray node here. So what we want to do is convert this chase from a sequence into a simple parallel. So to do this, we can start by naming our new simple parallel, chase. And then if you select the Blackboard gate based condition, which is our Blackboard decorator, and also select our get chase target location service, you can cut these by pressing control X and you can paste them by pressing control V. So what we can do now is get rid of this chase sequence node. We can just delete that guy and we can bring our simple parallel down to where it was, hook up your main selector to this new simple parallel and hook up this purple node to our BTT chase player. Now, this will act exactly how it was before and I can demonstrate this now. So in order for the simple parallel to work, it has to have a subtask. So for now, we'll just add wait as a demonstration. So now if we play, when the enemy sees the player, just like with the sequence, it will chase the player around the map. So already this is behaving just like the sequence was before, but now we have this little area here where we can execute subtasks. So we no longer need this wait node. Because what we're going to do is create an attack player task. And you can see if you save, I wasn't even aware of this, without a subtask assigned to this simple parallel, it actually automatically adds a wait for you. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is create a new task. So we can come up here, new task, and we'll select the BTT task blueprint base. And then we'll select our task folder as the location to save it. And we'll name it BTT underscore attack player. We will then compile and save this new task. And then we will add a event, receive execute AI. Now, we don't want to create our attack logic inside of this task. Because in the future, and in your own games already, you may have multiple types of enemies that you don't want to have to create a task for each type of enemy, otherwise behavior trees can come messy very quickly. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the attack logic inside of our enemy, and then we can call that attack function from this task. So right now, we only have one AI character which is our BP AI character. So we only have to worry about this for now. So we'll create a new function and we'll call it attack player. Now in the future, we can make this an overridable function so that we can make childs of this and have them execute their own logic. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and only focus on this one character. So for this character in specific, we're going to want it to shoot a line trace at the player. So to do this, we can start by getting our actor location, which will be the AI's location. And then we can get player character. And from the return value of that, we can get actor location, which will give us the player's location. Then from our function, we can drag out and do line trace by channel. And for the start point, we'll hook up our AI, and for the end point, we'll hook up our player location. 
Now with this implementation, this means we will always hit the player with 100% accuracy. And for now, that's fine. We can go over more advanced, uh, you know, attacking logic in a future video. Today, we're just focused on getting it functional with our new simple parallel. So for chase channel, we'll leave it visibility. We will leave chase complex disabled. We do not need to ignore any actors. I will enable draw debug for duration just so I can visualize it for you guys. And I'll leave ignore self true. So from the return value on this line trace by channel, we will add a branch. And then we'll drag out this out hit and we will break hit result. So if we hit something, we want to check if it was our player. So in our break hit result, we have hit actor. We can drag out and use this is a utility. And for the object class, we will search our BP player character or whatever your character is called in your game. And from this return value, we will add another branch to check if we hit the player. So we're checking if we hit something, is that something a player? Now, in your games, this is where you can say, okay, you know, you can grab this hit actor, you can cast to your player character, and you can tell your player character to take X amount of damage, you can destroy your player character, you can do whatever you want to do for your specific game here. But like I said, for today's video, we're just going over setting up the functionality to attack and not actually creating an attack. So this is all we're going to do for now. We're going to compile and save this, and we're going to come back to our behavior tree task. Now, in our behavior tree, what we can do is get our controlled pawn, and we can cast to BP underscore AI character. Now remember, in the future, like I mentioned, we will be creating children of this class, so they will all successfully cast this class. And since this class holds the function attack player, even if it's overridable, you can call it from here. And this will allow us to call a whole bunch of different types of attacks all within this one task. So as BP AI character, we will search for attack player. We will hook it up and then we will finish execute and call it a success. If the cast fails, we will finish execute and say it failed. Cool. So we can compile and save that and come back to our behavior tree. Now, over in our behavior tree, what we want to do is implement this. So from this gray node, we can drag out and add a new sequence. And this sequence we will call attack player. So what we'll do is we will add a wait at the start of this. And this will be the delay in between your attacks. Now, of course, you could also build this in to your attack player functionality. But like I said, I'm keeping it super simple. And we'll just add a wait node here. So I'll say we will attack every 0 0.25 seconds. And we could also add in a random deviation if we want. But again, I will not be doing that right now. So after the wait, I'm going to call our new BTT attack player task. So what will happen now is while we're chasing the player, we will attack the player. So if we run this now, when the AI spots the player, you see like this, it's going to chase the player and it's going to attack the player. Now, you can see right now it's sort of flickering. It's not actually ever attacking the player. And that's because this main task is finishing before it can execute this logic. So if we click on our chase simple parallel and we look at finish mode. So immediate means when the main task finishes, the subtask finishes with it as well. What we want to do is delayed which means when this finishes, we will still finish this attack player. So now, when the AI spots the player, you can see it shoots that line trace at the player, 
which was the shot. And it will keep doing it as it chases the player along. Just like so. There we go. We now have an AI that can patrol, chase a player, and attack a player. So you can see it lost sight of the player. And as soon as it lost sight of the player, it went back to patrolling. And as soon as it gets sight of the player, it will start chasing the player and shooting the player. Loses sight of the player, it goes back to patrolling. And of course, like I mentioned, with the current system, it has 100% accuracy, which is why you see those giant lines going and hitting the player. So, the last thing we can do today is check if the player is within a certain distance so that we aren't just shooting at the player across the map. Now, if as long as your enemy can see the player, you want it to be able to shoot the player, you can stop watching here. You already have that logic that is set in your perception component that we went over in the previous video. But if you want to have it chase the player until it gets within a certain range and then start attacking, that's what we are about to cover. So what we can do is we can create a new service and it will be BT service blueprint base. We will go to our service folder as our save location. We'll say BT service underscore get distance to player. We can save this and in here on event receive tick and we'll just say event tick AI. What we can do is get our player character and we will then search for the get distance to, uh, sorry, if we drag it from our controlled pawn, we can search get distance to, and the other actor will be our player character. So this gets distance to node will, or this function will return a value of type float, which represents the distance between our controlled pawn and our player. So what we want to do is create a new variable. It will say distance to player. And we don't want this to be a float. Again, we want it to be a blackboard key selector. We want to hit this I so that it is public and can be edited from our behavior tree. Then we'll drag it into our graph and we will set blackboard value. That's not how you spell board. Set blackboard value as float. We can hook this up, hook up the return value to get distance to the value, and then we can finish off this service by compiling and saving. All right. So what we can do now is come back to our behavior tree, and we can select this attack player sequence, add a service, get distance to player, and now what we'll need to do is create a key for the distance to player. So if we come on over to our blackboard here, we can add a new key. It will be a float and it will be distance to player. We can then save this and head back to our behavior tree, select our service and set distance to player to be our new distance to player key. We can then add a decorator onto this attack player. So we will set the um, blackboard key to distance to player. And then we'll say if it is less than or equal to, of course, you can say if it's greater than for whatever reason if you don't want it to attack if it gets too close you can do is greater than it's completely up to you and for me i'll say if it is less than or equal to let's say a thousand units it can attack the player now the reason i add the decorator here instead of up here is because if we just get rid of this weight and we're not within 
a thousand units of the player. This is going to be getting called every frame. It's going to be trying to do this every frame, which is quite excessive um, for this situation. If you really want, you can change the weight to like 0.1 seconds or 0 0.005 seconds. Uh, but I don't see a situation where it would need to be done every tick. So this is just a little optimization in the code. Now, on our service, we can also select how often we get the distance to the player. So I'm going to make this 0.25, and I'll make the random deviation 0. So basically, every time we finish waiting, we will also be getting the distance to the player. I, I made them the same time. You don't have to, of course, but I just did it. So now, if we save this and come back into our scene, the AI will patrol around. When it sees the player, it will chase the player, and it will shoot at the player. But note, if we get too far, it's not shooting until it gets close enough, at which point it will start shooting. We get too far, it's not shooting. When it gets close enough, it starts shooting. So that will cover everything for today's video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to keep up with the videos, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Be sure to leave any comments down below with any questions or suggestions on how we can improve these videos. And with that said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and good luck with your games.